Hi everyone, my name is Evangelia Prokopiu and I'm a senior lecturer in psychology at the University of Northampton. In this video capsule, I will present chapter five. Chapter five mainly aims to raise awareness of the impact child language brokering has on emotions, identity and relationships and provide some guidelines for using students as language brokers in schools. Let's start. The chapter begins by inviting you and your students to think about childhoods. We argue that our views about how children should develop and what childhood should be like have shifted in the past and will continue to change in the future. In today's Western societies, childhood is seen as a period of vulnerability and dependency, which should be free of adult-like activities that require maturity, autonomy and responsibility. However, in our societies, there are children who experience their childhood differently. Take child language brokers as an example. These children play an important part in helping their family communicate with people outside their family home. They do this by interpreting for adults something that is not usually considered appropriate for children. As we argue in this chapter, being seen as different has an impact on how they feel about themselves. It has an impact on their identity. That is their broad idea of who they are and who they want to be and of their beliefs and values. So how do children and young people feel about themselves when they interpret for others? Children can find language brokering stressful and difficult, especially if it takes place in challenging contexts such as a hospital or a police station, or involves the people around them getting frustrated or angry. At the same time, when praised for the time and effort they put in, young people can feel very positive about language brokering, enjoy the activity, and consider it a way of strengthening the relationship with their family. You can help students reflect on the complex experience of child language brokering with Activity 5B. In this activity, students will read a short vignette about the young language broker and will be invited to think about how young people cope with translating and interpreting in different contexts. One of the main aims of this activity is to consider how different contexts pose different challenges and generate different or similar emotions. As mentioned in chapter four, school is one of the contexts where language brokering takes place most frequently. In schools, Children and young people translate and interpret for their parents, teachers and peers. We understand that teachers may have mixed feelings about using pupils to translate and interpret at school. Children who act as language brokers have mixed feelings about this activity too. In this chapter, we recommend the use of professional services in their cultural mediators and public service interpreters to help with communication in foreign languages within school settings. However, since school is one of the contexts where language brokering takes place most frequently, we talk about the advantages and disadvantages that both teacher and language brokers see to the practice, and we share specific tips to help teachers, pupils, and parents communicate more efficiently during language brokering uh, sessions. You can explore uh, language brokering in the school context further with activity 5C. In this activity, students are given a, a language brokering scenario and are asked to work with their classmates to consider what teachers, young people and parents can do to help make the communication process involved in language brokering easier. We hope that you will find this chapter 
interesting, informative, and you will enjoy exploring its activities with your students.